Welcome back to the show and thanks for joining us again. Well, just before the break, we were wrapping up last week's matches and Flick, we were talking about Winch's win. Very quickly, we were talking <laughs> Very about Very quickly, them, we yes. had to go to a break. <laughs> I don't think there was any surprise there. Winch are on the, on the home straight for the finals now and uh, playing, uh, we played, had all all plays in, I believe, this weekend. So a uh, good game there. Fantastic weather for Nepal too on the weekend. So. Mm, beautiful, wasn't yeah, it? Even out at Winch. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointing for Bannockburn, though. It is. Uh, Bannockburn, though, being such a young side, I think, and, and we've said this all through the season, give them next season and we'll see how they're going as well. And mm. and knowing that there'll be a few changes in some of those top sides with the juniors and things, I think um, yeah. um, they've, they, Bannockburn have had an all right season. They've finished uh, third from the bottom, though, but... I suppose when you're trying to get those young players in, you can't expect that you'll be... Yeah, you've got to start anyway. somewhere, don't you? Mm. Yeah. And Bertie Thompson with, uh, I suppose, a comfortable win over North Geelong. Probably not as great as they would have expected, perhaps. Yeah, look, um, 11, 11 goals in the end. Um, you probably... I mean, I didn't see the game, and so it was probably a bit closer than what the actual scores indicate. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I'm sure Thompson just happy to get over the line there, mm. get the four points, and uh, they've got the double chance... Come finals, mm-hmm. North of course uh, elimination uh, this Sunday mm. um, against Winch. So um, yeah, look, we'll just have to wait and see now. Mm. I, think, uh, I think Thompson's um, happy with what uh, what's happened, and I'm sure Sonia's should have worked out now who she's going to play against Belpo still next week. Yeah, um, and um, we'll see what happens there. Now, Flick, I'm going to give you the floor. You've got some things you want to talk about. Oh, just some <laughs> housekeeping matters yeah, yeah. for for people that want to come and watch the finals this week. Um, game times under 13s are 8.45, uh, with the 15s at 9.45, the under 17s at 10.45, Ds at 11.45, uh, C at 12.45, and B at 1.45. With the uh, A-grade match between um, on the Saturday between Bellpost and Thompson at 2.45 and the Winchelsea North Geelong at, uh, at 2.45 on the Sunday as well. Uh, these games are all being pay- played at North Geelong out there and there is a small fee to, um, to get into the gate there as well. So um, mm-hmm. both on the Saturday and the Sunday elimination finals. So. What's a small fee? Uh, I'm not sure at this stage what it, what it is. So uh, players that hold their membership cards, I'm sure there'd be no fee for that, but any spectators mm. and things there will be. Yep. I don't think it was very much last year. Right. Five or seven dollars or something. Mm. So the first week of finals are at North Geelong and then the rest of the finals are at St Albans. St Albans, that's right. where so, they normally are. Yep. Um, on, so it's every Saturday, Sunday now for the next uh, th- three weeks um, with the grand final we played on Saturday the 12th. Of September, so very good. Okay. Um, the other thing I also wanted to notice was that the junior vote count um, is at uh, Bell Post Hill on Monday, the 31st of August. So um, under 13s are at 6:30, under 15s are at 7, and under 17s at 7:30. Each uh, club has 10 10 um, positions on a the table. Mm-hmm. There's some nibbles and, and a few drinks provided, but it's only for half an hour, so it's a good chance to go along mm-hmm. and just see how our juniors are really going because we do have some some good quality there and a lot of our juniors, especially in the under uh, 15s and 17s, are definitely playing seniors. So I suggest for everyone to go along and have a, have a look. Talk to your coordinators or to, to players you know and make sure you've got a spot there to go and have a look. Mm. Um, now, I just was looking through the um, Addy last Monday and I actually thought Mandy actually had a, a nice, well, a really written, a well-written article and it was, you know, and I mean, it's not an easy thing to do week in and week out. No. Um, so we have to um, you know, take our hats off to Mandy for doing a good job during the season, mm. um, keeping us updated with everything. It is a hard job though because the Addy don't write mm. everything that you, that you write right. in as well. So yeah. um, Mandy, you have done a good job and you've given us a lot of information throughout the season as well. So good work there. And also like Mandy will write things and send it to the Addy and then they'll change mm. certain things to suit, mm. you know, what, you know, you think, what the hell? And mm. um, So it, it's yeah. not easy, but um, she's, she's done a pretty good job, I think. Mm. It's a tough gig. Also, yes. last Saturday night, most clubs had their best and fairest mm-hmm. counts. And I've actually just got a couple of results here. Uh, the best and fairest uh, for Werribee 2009 was Danny Stewart. Uh, down at Bellpost Hill, uh, Kim Martin and Emma Harty drew for the best and fairest down there. Uh, down at North Geelong, Sylvia Luxo uh, won their best and fairest. Uh, Winchelsea, Amy Worth won their best and fairest down there. 
Uh, down at East Geelong, Amy Dervis Oscar will win their best and fairest. And down at Inverley, Nicole White took out the best and fairest down at Inverley as well. So congratulations to those mm-hmm. girls. Um, mm-hmm. Good to see that they've uh, mm-hmm. capped off their year with uh, their best and fairest for their respective clubs. And um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how many of those players are picked for the team of the year, which the coaches do, mm. uh, which in fact is due very shortly for those coordinators out there, get those mm. in. But um, to see how many of those are, are in, it does make a big difference. So, Well, like Sylvia Luxo from North mm. Geelong, she's a, a former league best and fairest. Yeah, that's, that's right. A couple two of years, years ago, ago. Yeah. I think two years ago. Um, so look, Sylvia for sure must be in the showing there mm. um, for the team of the year and also maybe for the... Um, uh, for the league best and fairest again. again. Yeah, she, that's right. Uh, being a, an outside running there. Mm. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Mm. Kim Martin's had a great year down at Bob Post Hill as well. Yes. Danny Stewart for Werribee's had mm-hmm. a great year mm-hmm. down at uh, no Werribee. Mm. So um, it'll be interesting come September the 7th. Mm. It's a Monday night. The Netball League best and fairest vote count. Um, so I'm sure most of the girls will be going along to that. Yeah, it's usually a good night. Yeah, so. it is. It, it's good to see uh, a lot of us get white line fever on the court, I think. So on those, on those nights like that, you get to know people for how they play and, and just personal as well. So it's definitely worth going along. Um, now also, I've got a friend out of, uh, I've got a friend at Anarchy, actually. She's asked, asked me about um, subtitles for the TV. And uh, Julie, I know you're watching and we're working on it. I'll, I'll let you know. All right, thanks for that, Bernie. <laughs> we'll be back in a short moment after this break. <laughs> 